It's sad but true. The race card is on full display once again as lawmakers on the left say that those that disagree with the president's new anti-gun plans, well, they must be racist. Now listen to what Congressman Hank Johnson told CNS News yesterday after the president announced he was going to bypass Congress and put forward 23 executive actions. You said uh, just a minute ago that, that uh, part of the NRA's true colors was what seemed to be kind of a personal dislike of, of the president. Why do you think, why do you well, think that is? I first mean, of since all, first of all, first of all, he is a black. And as a black person, uh, being the president of the United, the United States, that's something that they still cannot, um, they still cannot get over. They couldn't get over the first election. They're still shell shocked at the second election, to use a pun, shell shock. Congressman Johnson, I have a wild thought. Perhaps the NRA disagrees with the president's policies because they represent an assault on the Second Amendment to the Constitution. And there's more. Just yesterday, New York Congressman Charlie Rangel said that the racists in the South are to blame for the lack of gun laws in that region. Oh, really? Listen to this. New York uh, is a little different and more progressive in, in a lot of areas than some other states. And some of the southern areas have cultures that we have to overcome. Joining us now with reaction to this, the entire gun control showdown, author, attorney David Limbaugh, Fox News political analyst Juan Williams. Juan, your reaction? Well, I don't think that this is a, about the president's race, but I think that race has a lot to do with this conversation. That's why I think you see uh, Congressman Johnson from Georgia saying, hey, look, if you look across the South, high membership in the NRA, high amount of gun ownership principally among whites and, in fact, mostly Republicans. And it makes for a huge divide in terms of trying to how's enact race, some reasonable legislation that, that puts in place reasonable gun control. It's a more rural area. People have been brought up with the use of guns. Hunting is more widespread. There are not many hunters in New York City, Juan. Uh, yeah, I agree. Uh, so, I mean, it's a little different than an, than an urban or a city environment, isn't it? No, but that doesn't, that wouldn't stop you from saying that hunters and NRA members don't understand that there's a need for reasonable gun control That's legislation That's not what he country. said. He, what, what Hank Johnson said, they still can't get over that Obama is black. Well, that's what they said. Me. That, I, that is I race baiting. With you. I agreed with you, Sean. I, I don't think that that's a legitimate argument to make. I don't think it's because, I don't know what, in his mind, a lot of Southerners, right. a region that, I mean, 60% of white people didn't vote for Obama, and the South went overwhelmingly for Listen, Romney. I, I am Maybe getting tired of saying. this. David Limbaugh, I'm getting tired of this country being led by the president, being divided along racial lines, rich versus poor, black versus white, old versus young. This president, the most divisive president in history, and of course, we hear it from his party almost daily now. Maybe they don't know the campaign's over. You know, the, the Hank Johnson said he can't get over, we can't get over that he's black. Now, I can't get over that he's a Marxist. You know, this constant usage of uh, liberals and Obama of the race card is damaging rela race relations, it's damaging minorities, it's damaging blacks. I could tick off 17 examples of Obama's exploitation of race. I had them in both of my books. I've got them listed here if you want to waste the time going into them. But <clears throat> this is hurting race relations and <clears throat> Obama is deliberately projecting race onto his political opponents, saying it's their racism. It's not. It's a case of deliberate projection. He, he's doing it to his political advantage. It's shameful. And Juan, I don't think, subscribes to it, and I wish he would condemn it. I just did. Uh, by the way, David, what, no, no, no. what he's I'm saying, saying He's is saying Obama's you, use of it. He's saying, you know, unchained, oh, yeah, they're going to put you back in chains. It's deliberate, Juan. It's where did, David, where did you delivered. see President Obama say that this was because of race? He said that there's too much he's, killing in this country. And you look up in Connecticut, no, he's got, those were overwhelmingly white children. He, he's got his uh, minions out doing it for him. He went to minorities in the 2010 and 2012 campaigns and appealed on the basis of race, told them to get out there. Eric Holder said uh, that we were cowards on race. <clears throat> Obama continues to talk about uh, injecting race into all aspects. When he talked about bitter cling clingers, he suggested that we had antipathy for people who don't look like us. Uh, he said if he had a kid, he, it would look, he would look like Trevon David, Trevon, David, uh, David, David, uh, David, All David, these a man things are race on the brain. A man of your intellect, David, you are way off in the weeds. You've lost all 
touch with this central argument that I'm making to you that you can see the carnage in the black community at a tremendously high rate on a well, nightly basis. You guys ought to you be look at the you have to be worried about black Chicago. on black crime then. Instead yeah, okay, of exploiting I don't care. children. Oh, so what are you saying, David? Because it's black on black crime, it's tolerable? Oh, why isn't he active no, of women? I, you can make what, the case. What? Why didn't he I act before? I said you ought to be focused on it. You ought to be okay. focused on that. You ought Let's to be focused focus on the crime on in the inner city. Place. That are Let's what? focus then on putting in place reasonable gun control that keeps guns out of the gun hands control. of these gangbangers that are killing fellow gun. Americans. They don't obey gun laws. Lawbreakers do don't obey them, Juan. What do you and, mean? And if gun we, control if we... Go ahead, David. has Sorry. the opposite effect. Gun control has the opposite effect. You have these assault weapons bans, and, and you increase crime. You create these gun-free zones, and that's where the maniacs go. You, you, no. uh, most of the weapons, most of the murders are committed by handguns, only a small percentage by assault weapons, which, by the way, do not exist. There's no such thing that semi-automatic, that reload automatically. we got to okay. keep the guns Let, in the hands of people to, this, to defend themselves. Let's come themselves. back to the heart of this argument, yep. David. You're saying that they, somehow the gangbangers, the thugs, all go to gun-free zones. David, they are getting guns no, from no, no, states no. that have lax gun laws. Those guns are funneled into places like New York, Chicago, Houston. And then they're used to kill people, and that's why most Americans, and I would add, according to Frank Luntz, most NRA members think that you can not, put in place reasonable steps that I'm don't not, take away your Second Amendment rights. I'm not saying gangbangers go to gun-free zones. I'm saying these maniac killers have gone to those zones, and Obama wants to direct all his laws to those incidents, and he wants to prescribe the exact wrong solutions and, and play on people's emotions because he has something more in mind, not just banning assault weapons, but getting uh, confiscating right, we go. our weapons. We have to be you're, suspicious. You're, Guys, you're we got to go. Thank you, David. Juan, David. Oh, Good to I see you both. It. I love see it. See you guys.